Hello there, it's Alistair from the De Havilland Aircraft Museum and uh, I thought it'd be worth taking you through a little bit of the early history of the De Havilland Aircraft Company and the history of Geoffrey De Havilland himself who of course started the company that was named after him. Fascinating chap, he was born in 1882 in High Wycombe. Uh, he was one of five children of a parson, he had two brothers and two sisters uh, and Geoffrey and his two brothers loved anything mechanical, uh, early motorbikes and cars and things like that. Geoffrey went to college and he got his first job with the Wolseley Car Company up in Birmingham and then moved down to London to work for the London General Omnibus Company designing the very early motor buses for the streets of London. And this was great, it was, a fight, it was a secure job and so forth but uh, you know what, it didn't really um, float his boat very much because Geoffrey and a friend from work had heard all about what the Wright brothers were doing in Louis Blériot and so forth uh, and they were just obsessed with the idea of learning to fly. The friend was called Frank Hurl, he was a Cornishman, he was also an engineer at the London Omnibus Company uh, and Geoffrey and Frank used to go around to each other's digs at night and they used to just talk flying and talk aeroplanes and eventually got to the point where they said look this, is, this has gone far enough, let's just give up the day job and let's concentrate on this, let's follow our dream. So they borrowed a thousand pounds from Geoffrey's grandfather and they set themselves up in business to design and build a flying machine. They rented a lock-up garage in Fulham in London uh, and that's where they started. Now this display case here of course we're all under wraps at the moment but uh, I'm going to show you what's in here because this really is our display case that relates to our early days of the de Havilland Company. Uh, why the sewing machine you ask? Well we'll come to that in a minute because when they started in business 1908 Geoffrey had just got married to uh, a young girl called Louis and um, the three of them were actually in business together uh, because Geoffrey and Frank were building the structure of the aircraft and Louis was in charge of the fabric covering that was going over the plane and over its wings. Uh, and so here we have a little picture of Louis sitting at her sewing machine, lovely Edwardian hat in 1909, um, and um, she's hard at work sewing the fabric that will cover flying machine number one, which they completed in 1909. And um, they rented a field down in North Hampshire at a place called Seven Barrows Hill. Uh, and they took their flying machine down by road, reassembled it at the hill, at the, at the field, and um, they test flew it in 1909. Unfortunately, it crashed, and Geoffrey himself was very slightly injured in the crash, but he recovered quickly. They loaded the wreckage back on the truck, took it back up to Fulham, uh, and from the remains of flying machine number one, they built flying machine number two. Uh, that was rather better. They took it back down to Seven Barrows in 1910 and flew it from there and that one worked. So with Geoffrey at the controls and Frank making notes and sketches from the ground, they taught themselves the rudiments of flying. Um, they were one of the very first people in the United Kingdom to do that. Now of course even in 1910 a thousand pounds doesn't go very far uh, and Geoffrey and Frank eventually ran out of cash. So they sold their flying machine and they sold themselves, they sold their own services to the uh, Royal Balloon Factory at Farnborough, which rapidly turned into the Royal Aircraft Factory. Um, and so they were involved in the design and engineering of some of the Royal Aircraft Factory's earliest aircraft designs. And one of them they're working on is this one with the picture behind me here. It's known as the BE2C. BE stood for Blerio Experimental, uh, and that was the generic name given to all the aircraft of this general design with the propeller at the front, which not all of them had at that stage. It's, uh, as, well, you can see it's a lovely pre First World War biplane. And this here is the actual propeller from a BE2C biplane. This is around 110 years old. Um, and it was given to us as a gift last year by a very kind lady called Liz Smith. So Liz, if you're watching this at all, thank you so much for this. I would have to say that this is one of my favourite artefacts in the whole museum. Um, I just love the feel you get from running your hand over that wood. It's a craftsman shaped sculpted laminate piece of wood here um, built into a four bladed propeller. Uh, bear in mind of course it's a propeller it goes around at very high speed. It is perfectly balanced. Each of these four blades is perfectly mechanically balanced uh, as the aircraft air screw. Um, I'd have to say it's one of my favourite items in the museum. Because of where we are uh, we're right at the entrance of the museum now so as you come in, as you start your tour of the museum, um, it's the first item that you see. I have to say, when you come and see us, and hope you will, uh, you will get to meet this propeller and it will be one of the first things you'll see along the same machine, along with some interesting documents we might talk about later. Uh, it's one of my favourites. Hope you like it too. So there you go. Stay safe, stay in touch, stay tuned. Thanks.